A federal election is coming up, and the way we vote in the Senate has just changed. Some things remain the same though. On election day, we'll still get two pieces of paper. One to vote for a local member in the House of Representatives, and the other is for the Senate, the House that reviews what the government does. In previous Senate elections, when you voted for a party who didn't get elected, that party decided who got your vote. Often it meant your vote would go somewhere you wouldn't want it to. For example, at the last election in some states, people who voted for the Animal Justice Party could have seen their vote go to Pauline Hanson's One Nation. And in South Australia, Labor and Greens votes helped elect a far-right Family First Senator. Under the new system, if your first choice doesn't get elected, you'll decide who gets your vote. If you vote above the line, you should vote for at least six parties by numbering them one to six. If your first choice isn't elected, your vote will go to the second choice, third choice, and so on. Your vote won't go to any party who you don't vote for. If you vote below the line, you should vote for as many parties and candidates as you like, but number at least 12 boxes so that your vote has a good chance of electing someone. Senate elections can be really close. The last election, two seats were decided by just 13 votes, so your vote could really make the difference. Voting for at least six parties by numbering them one to six above the line is the easiest way to make sure your vote counts this election. Happy voting.